Today we're going to be talking about composites, cutouts, and pieces of circles. Our objective is that we'll be able to use the formula sheet to identify figures and determine the area and volume of two-dimensional and three-dimensional figures, including practical problems. So composite means that we are going to put together multiple figures. So we're going to need to add pieces together at the end. So in our example, find the surface area of the composite solid below. So we've got a square pyramid on top of a uh, rectangular prism. Surface area means everything outside. Now, normally the surface area of a pyramid would include the bottom, but when we put these two shapes together, the bottom doesn't count anymore. And if you recall, that's actually called the lateral area. So for the pyramid, we are going to find the lateral area. The formula for the lateral area is 1 half LP. Now it told us that the L, our slant height, is 15, but we need to know the perimeter of the base. Since the top of the box would be the same as the bottom of the box, we know this is 14, 14, 14, and 14. So P would equal 14 times 4, which is 56. So our lateral area is 1 half of 15 times 56, which gives us 420. So that takes care of the top of the house shape. Now we need the sides and the bottom of the cube. So let's do the sides first. All the sides are going to be the same. And the area of one side would be 14 times 16 length times width, just like on our rectangle, area is length times width. So one side has an area of 224, but we have four sides to the box, so that would equal 224 times four sides which is 896. Now for the bottom of the box, again, area is length times width, which would be 14 times 14, which is 196. So, to find the surface area of the whole shape, it would be 420 plus 9, or sorry, 896 plus 196, which all together gives us 15, or sorry, 1512, and then our units were centimeters, and since we're dealing with area, it's centimeters squared. Cutouts. When figures are inside each other, it is necessary to use multiple formulas and subtract. So here we have a spherical ball that has a diameter of 2. So I'm going to label that on my picture. It is dropped into a cylindrical cup with a diameter of 6. So all the way across is 6, and it told us halfway is 3, and a height of 5. Assuming the ball is non-porous, which means it won't suck up any of the water, and will re remain at the bottom, what is the volume of water the cup can hold now? So what we're going to have to do is find the volume of the cylinder. We're going to have to find the volume of the ball or the sphere. And then we're going to subtract them. So volume of a cylinder, if you look on your formula sheet, is pi r squared h. 
So in our case, pi, our radius is 3 squared times 5. And I'm not going to type in the pi to my calculator right now. It's going to make it easier when we subtract. So I'm going to get 45 pi. Because 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. For the volume of the sphere, volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. It told us the diameter is 2, so the radius would be 1. So that would give us just 4 thirds pi as our volume. So to find the total volume, or the new volume that's left, we would subtract that 45 pi minus 4 thirds pi. If we type that in our calculator, 45 pi minus 4 thirds pi, we get that the volume is 137. because it says round to the nearest whole number, and our units would be feet cubed. So, Changing dimensions. Sometimes part of a single figure will change. In that case, examine the formula closely. For example, a cylinder has a radius of six centimeters and a height of eight centimeters. Part A, if the height of the cylinder increases by a factor of four, by what factor does its volume increase? So notice that they're talking about the volume of a cylinder. Going to our formula sheet, we find the formula for volume of a cylinder is V equals pi r squared h. Now, when something increases by a factor of 4, factor is something that is multiplied. So we are multiplying by 4 to the height. So we're going to change just the part of the height to be multiplied by 4. So instead of h, it will be 4h. Because it's multiplied, it increases by a factor of 4. Let's write the rest of the formula around that. So instead of h, it's 4 times h. Now, what factor does the volume increase by? We can rearrange these factors so that the pi, r squared, and h are all next to each other. What does that mean? Well, remember that multiplication is commutative and associative. So we can, instead of multiplying in this order, we can multiply the pi, r squared, and h together and then multiply the 4 after. They're still all multiplied, just like this, but the 4 is multiplied after. Notice that this part right here is what V equals from the formula. So this means V is multiplied by 4. So by what factor does the volume increase? It's also multiplied by a factor of 4. So the factor in question is 4. Now, notice B asks something similar, but slightly different. If the radius of the cylinder increases by a factor of 4, by what factor does its volume increase? So again, we're starting with our volume formula, V equals pi r squared h. But this time, instead of the height increasing, it's the radius increasing by a factor of 4. So we remember factor means multiply. So we're going to take the r and it will be 4 times r. Everything else around that will stay the same. 
So the r is squared, that means the 4r is squared. The h is multiplied, the pi is multiplied, and it equals v. Let's simplify this a little bit. Because we're squaring 4r, that means 4r times 4r. 4 times 4 is 16, and r times r is r squared. So 4r squared turns into 16r squared and then of course times h. Now just like we did over here, we can rearrange so that the pi r squared h are all next to each other. Here's the pi, the r squared, and the h. So we'll rewrite this with the pi r squared h first, and then the 16 after, times 16. Again, notice all of this is all of our volume formula which means this is the same as saying volume times 16. So what factor does a, the volume increase? This time by a factor of 16. Thanks for watching.